All right, uh, this is going to be a quick video on how to set up your MeshTastic uh, device. So first things first is you're going to download the program um, and you're going to go to mesh, flasher.meshtastic.org. Okay, it'll take you to a website that looks just like this. Once you're on this website, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to click select target device. And in this case, the one that's uh, in, included in the kit is the rack. Wise Block 4631 under Nordic Semiconductor. Once you click on that, you're going to click on the Select Firmware version. I usually recommend Stable. Alpha is like the beta testing. Uh, stable is much more stable. 12 is the lowest one. I usually go by the, the oldest one just because it's more stable, um, has less glitches and bugs. Uh, so we're going to choose 12. You can choose the newer one if you want, but understand that um, there's still um, testing um, and they're still iffy anyway next you go to flash once you go to flash you're going to scroll down and continue and then you end up with this window now this is where you plug your device in so we're going to plug in the device and this is just this device uh, the rack module you're going to we're connected it through a USB-C cable make sure before you plug in the device that the antennas for both the Bluetooth and the LoRa are connected if you plug in the USB without plugging those antennas in there is a high chance you will blow out the uh, the uh, transceiver on board um, the module since there is no uh, antenna connected to it so make sure you connect the antennas first and then you plug in through the USB. Once you plug it in, you should hear the typical sound made by Windows signifying that it's plugged in. At this point, you can enter DFU mode two ways. One, by clicking on this button, it'll automatically send it into DFU mode once it's connected. Or you can double click the button on the rack module fast and it will put it into DFU mode and then you just connect it via USB. So we're going to connect it, uh, go to enter DFU, and you're going to click on where it says tiny USB serial. It should not say paired. I just connected it so it already got synced, but it should just have uh, just COM21 or COM. It should say COM1 or COM2 or COM3 in your case. Uh, the numbers go up. It goes up from COM123 all the way up to 21, past that to 80, 90, etc. Um, it resets back down, and the reason why my number is 21 is because every time you plug in a new rack module, it assigns a new COM to it. It'll be COM2, then you plug in a new module, COM3, COM4, COM5. So in your case, it could be COM1 or 2 or 3. My case is COM21. But look for tiny USB serial, or COM1, 2, 3 in your case, and press connect. Once it does that, it'll kick it into DFU mode and automatically pull this up. If it does not automatically pull it up, look for it in your PC and look for the device. It should say rack 434631. You're gonna click on it and leave it open like this. Next, you're gonna to go to download UF2, that's the file. You're gonna click on download and it will download it. Once it's finished downloading, okay, you're gonna to go to the folder that it's located in and you're going to copy it. Literally, all you do is copy it. So you're gonna click copy and you're gonna go back to your USB flash drive slash rack module. So you're gonna go back here, and right here you're gonna paste it. You literally paste it. There's nothing else that needs to be done, no changing of the name. You can leave it at number two, whatever that name is, because it'll automatically reassign it to current um, once it's done copying. Sometimes you might get an error. It'll say, sorry, this uh, could not be configured. The connection to the device was lost. That's fine. That means it was done. It's just the rack module rebooted quicker than Windows could uh, register it being disconnected properly. So in this case, it's done. It doesn't show up. It just shows up as J, but that's fine. Your device, if you look on it with the LCD connected, it should be rebooting and it should say MeshTastic. And you would open up at this point your iPhone or Android application of MeshTastic and go to the tab where you can connect to the device, the Bluetooth option. And on the Bluetooth option, at that point, um, you should be able to connect to it. You press connect, type in the six digit code that's displayed on the LCD. And once you connect to it, it'll say, please assign region in a red text. You click on that arrow on your app. This is all on your iPhone and Android. And click assign United States as the region. Next, you or whatever country you're in. 
Uh, next, scroll down to where it says hop jumps. It's default three. I would recommend five so that it goes a little bit longer, your message. The longer it goes, um, the longer it'll take to come back, but it also adds congestion to the network. So sometimes if you're in a heavily congested area where there's radios within a couple hundred feet or miles away from you, you would want to put the hop count lower um, so you don't oversaturate the network. Uh, but in this case, um, I usually put it at five uh, if it's in a rural location, just so that it goes longer and you can reach more people. Um, but you can change all of those options now, and then you scroll to the bottom and click save. And then we'll reboot the device again, and now you should be able, it should auto-connect it to your phone, and you should be able to use it. Go to message tab, go to channels, and then you have your primary message. And then that way you can go ahead and start texting and messaging people once it restarts. And that's how you flash it. So if the rack module stops working or it doesn't boot up and it just shows a light or it's like flashing light, then you would get it into DFU mode and repeat the same procedure again. That way um, it will rewrite the corrupted firmware with an, uh, an override with a current one and a stable one and that usually fixes those issues where the rack module doesn't show any life or, or signs of life. If that doesn't work after doing it, then at that point you might have a defective or shorted out rack module. And in that case, please contact us. Otherwise, you should be good to go. Thank you and enjoy your device and let us know if you have any issues.